are on our way to Marcy Dam. We just uh, passed the junction that would take you up to Wright Peak. We encountered some uh, two skier, uh, skier and snowboarder that are heading up that way. Apparently, on uh, not not at Wright Peak, but when you're going up towards it, there's a, a backcountry ski snowboard spot that people like to go to. So it's pretty cool. I'm sure there's more places like that back here too. But uh, we talked to a ranger. Uh, he's kind of politely uh, gear shaking down people at the parking lot. Uh, he's doing a good job, making sure people have the equipment that they need. And our snowshoes are inside our packs. So when we told him where we're going, he told us once we get past the dam, the snowshoes are required. So that means we might actually get to use the snowshoes. So maybe we'll find snow there. I mean, as we hike back, we are seeing more and more snow coverage. So maybe. We've already seen a good amount of people head out onto the trail. Some people are coming back. One of the popular things up here to do for people that aren't like as in the hiking as others I'll just come out to Marcy Dam and then go back. And that's not a bad hike to do. It's a, the train's not bad. The mileage isn't bad. So, And for winter, you don't need as much gear. You just need some sort of micro spike, good foot, foot traction. You're all right. Oh, which... Did you hear that? No. So the ranger, I heard him tell one person... When he was like checking their footwear, they had foot traction, but they didn't have micro spikes, and they didn't have yak tracks either. I forget what he called them, but uh, he told the he told the person that their foot traction would not be adequate for back here. So, so another thing, uh, uh, Kurt Kurt will probably have this in his video, but we were talking that uh, the New York Rangers, and it doesn't matter what part of New York you're in. Catskills up here, Hudson Highlands. The Rangers are awesome. They're always very informative, very nice. They're always clear about what you can and cannot do. Uh, and from the different places I've hiked, I find them to be like above the others. All right, we are at Marcy Dam. It's a little bit clearer than when I brought Kurt here back in August. That was way earlier in the morning and things were way more socked in. But we are gonna be heading out that direction. We're gonna loop out around here and where this stream kinda goes back into the woods, we're gonna follow that along and we're gonna cut back into the valley and uh, in Avalanche Pass. There's normally a ranger posted here too. So one of the cool things I like about coming up here is usually there's a ranger at the parking lot. There's usually a ranger somewhere in the middle of the trail. Like here, Marcy Dam is a very popular location, so it makes sense to have a ranger here. And then normally on the peaks, you will find a ranger. Wintertime, I don't know about that, but I know in the summertime, every time I've gone to a peak in the summer, I've encountered a ranger. Uh, so. Yeah, so this is uh, this is nice. You can actually get to put those guys on. So they didn't come here for nothing. My snacks are in that bag. I'm gonna dig one out and take just a moment to cool down. Uh, we were setting a pretty good pace and got a little overheated, so we're gonna let ourselves cool off just a little bit, take a snack, and then we'll get going. There is actually more snow back here. Pretty decent coverage as we get further and further back into the valley here. Uh, we do have the snowshoes on, so so far the only objective of this trip that didn't get met was backpacking. But honestly, it was, it was definitely the good way to go. Uh, but yeah, the hiking's been pretty awesome. Uh, the worst part of it was some of the sketchy spots on Mount Joe yesterday. 
there's a little bit of precipitation coming through. Uh, so it's all because Kurt took his raincoat off. <laughs> but uh, the good thing about that is that we're in an open spot right now, but we are going to be heading more into a denser area. So these few spare, uh, spare drops here, we're not even going to notice them in a little bit. Uh, we're going to be hiking along this for a little bit. We're eventually going to cross over to the other side and then that will start winding us back towards uh, the past Avalanche Lake. But yeah, great trek so far. Uh, I've done this in the summer twice now and this trail is normally really muddy and really rocky. So having the smooth snow and ice covered surface is kind of nice. <laughs> Almost have Lanch Lake. Right up here, this is the really cool wall that Panda and I saw when we backpacked up through this area. It is definitely raining now, and uh, we got rain gear on. Yeah, this place is cool. But it's still decently warm it's it's still 40 out so really had to shed layers to not overheat in the, the rain gear but thankfully we have enough tree cover that it's not too terrible and I have a, every time you get out to uh, an open area you can Tell that it's definitely raining a little heavier. Yeah, check that out. That's awesome. Lake. And this is a pretty cool, pretty cool view right here. Just seeing like the reflection of both sides in the water and how still the water is. But this is what you got to both sides of you, and it goes pretty much the whole way to the end, other end of the lake, to where uh, Lake Colden is. And these uh, these cliff sides. Uh, they're a little less aggressive on that end of it, but there's a, there's a few spots where this widens out and tightens up and the left side gets really crazy high and steep, but yeah, it's a very cool spot. But it is definitely time for food. It's probably like, what, one? Yeah, can I? Yeah, not too bad. And, uh... So we have roughly a five mile hike out. Now I am probably gonna go up alongside the lake a little bit and follow the trail out. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. We'll see, but food first, then decision making afterward. All right, we had our lunch and we came a little bit further into the lake, uh, right where uh, you Kind of keep going from where we took our lunch it was one of the first ladders going in the other direction and uh, I learned with my snowshoes that the way these tilt I can go up a wide ladder with them uh, so that was cool Kurt wasn't able to so 
he's in the process of taking his off and we heard other people and they were we, we did see some tracks like this along the edge of the ice and in the ice that's the way those guys were coming and uh, I asked asked them how the uh, ice is and they said it was fine they said along the edges here it's firm they had a, like I guess a few places where like where the snow and the ice meet a little slushy but yeah which is awesome because I was super hesitant to, st to walk that way because you know falling in icy water yeah not necessarily on my to-do list anytime soon but yeah this is awesome and here is uh one of the boardwalks that they haven't anchored into the cliff face and this is the smaller of the two when you get to one of the next sections there's a longer cliff face and if i remember correctly that one it kind of just like curves with the contour of the cliff and uh both very cool spots um, yeah if you've never hiked up here and you want to the avalanche pass trail is definitely one to check out the ranger at marcy dam that we were talking to said that this has become one of their most popular trails and after hiking this in two two different seasons i can totally understand why but the, the weather has still been very iffy it's been mostly raining for a while now it picks up and that tapers off picks up tapers off so uh, it could have been a lot worse and thankfully uh, thankfully it didn't mess up our plans too much and we were able to uh, still get out here but we're gonna start making our way back and uh, I don't know, we have like what, like three hours till dark, something like that. The cool thing is once we, once we get close to the Marcy Dam area, if uh, we run into like a headlamp situation, it won't be so bad. That track is so well traveled and so, so packed in nicely that uh, if you're gonna do anything in the dark, that's an easy one to do. But we have plenty of camp. We have uh, plenty of firewood at camp waiting for us, uh, so yeah, it'd be a good end to the day. Oh, well, shall we? Before we turn around, yes. Just as a note to you, listen back to the audio because about a minute and a half ago, something fell on the ice. Around that. I heard it tumble, and I didn't see it. But I heard it go pop, and it hit the ice. Oh, nice. I know the theme of this trip has been a lot of. You know, be aware of this situation, uh, roll with the conditions, because that's pretty much all we've done the whole weekend. But when we were hiking up this, there's a group of guys coming down, and the one guy post hold, and it was like, like right back up there. And I didn't realize we were this far back already. But, uh, so when they were coming down and Kurt and I were coming up, I stepped off to the side to let them go by, and I post hold there, got up, moved forward post hold again while wearing snowshoes so so i mean these things are awesome but they're not exactly a fail safe i mean you can kind of see there like that's that's like really hollow underneath but yeah so you yeah, definitely gotta pay attention to your surroundings thankfully i didn't get hurt or anything it wasn't very far and there was nothing crazy underneath me but ooh. I see like some fog rolling in. That looks awesome. I don't know if that's gonna show up on camera, but looking down towards the left trail there, which is the one we're gonna take, you can see it just sitting down in there. That's awesome. Yeah, this is gonna be an awesome hike out. I don't know how much I'm gonna video because, uh, you know, we've already done it. This is an out and back. Oh, yeah, someone, a lot of post holding going on. I mean, the temps are starting to drop again, so things should start to firm up around here. But, uh, yeah. We'll say, uh, if you're interested in snowshoeing, you should definitely check it out. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, I'm glad I have a pair of my own, but I do know like, I know in Pennsylvania, a lot of places, a lot of state parks will rent them. 
and uh, like I know Hickory Run rents them, and up here they rent them. So if it's something you're curious about, but don't want to make the investment in buying your own. Look in their look in the trails around you that might rent. hike. Nice weather coming out, so hanging around camp won't be too bad. Get to have a nice dinner, get that fire going, and just relax. But yeah, that's it. Another great day up here. Uh, definitely better than what the forecast called for, so that's a win. Definitely going to take that. But, yeah, see you guys later. I love the Adirondacks, definitely.